Hi everyone, let's talk about Next. Um, at the beginning, we start Next as a server-side rendering framework and a static website generator. For now, it's more like a versatile Vue.js fr framework. We start to add more options with the community to be able to disable the server-side rendering so you can create single-page application too. We also add the possibility to use it with Electron to create desktop application. We finish soon to create progressive web app application with Next and we want to support native scripts soon. So what is inside Next? How does it, we've made it? Next is built with Webpack, Babel, and all Vue ecosystem. Not just only Vue. Vue with all its ecosystem, Vue Router, Vuex, all you need to create a full web application. And with all this package, you will be able to ship blazing fast Vue.js application with no configuration, just by installing Next. So, making development view of view application are great, but we want to make it more enjoyable. You have no webpack config to write, just one dependency. <laughs> <laughs> it's optimized by default. You are, we handle pre-processing, post-processing by default, and you are just have to be focused on writing .view file. We also add some features to help uh, developers who are using Next. We add the file system router inside our page folder, who automatically creates your view router files with your file system. We add also the file system store modules in the store directory. We add the data, it's something we have to handle with, with the server-side rendering. We have two methods, async data and fetch, who allows you to prefetch your data from the server-side before render it. We got also documents and layouts. We had middleware. This is interesting because middleware is something from the back end, so we also add it to your view application. So you can keep the, the, your logic you add from the back into the front. We can patch transition. Dynamic component injection, it's very brand new things. You can, for example, inject few components defined from an API. So I'll go through it later. And we get also add element where it's very important, for example, for CEO and stuff like that. And more and more options. We get Next.js plugins. When you want to work with server-side rendering, you get some problem with, for example, some DOM elements doesn't exist on the server-side. For example, you get documents is undefined because it doesn't exist on the server-side. So by creating Next plugins, we embrace JS and Vue ecosystem. Right? You can import and use external library and make it compatible with Vue server side rendering. You choose for isomorphic or just client side only library. You can create and add your own Vue plugins, mixing, filter, and global components. And you can also use the Next.js context and an API. So let's start with a, a quick example of how you can show it. First of all, just npm install next. You get your package in season. You have just one dependency, and you can add your script for the command line tools. And then, just a quick example with a simple page. As you can see, like I told before, we have this async data function. We get the context from X with the request. Yeah, like you can see, 
If the request exists, we are on the same side. If it doesn't, it's rendered from the client side. The name variable is also used like a data. We merge data from the async data method into the data method interview. So that means you can use it like it's for the data variables. A more difficult, uh, let's say, more difficult, more advanced example with the underscore id.view. It's a file system functionality who allows you to create dynamic routes. This route will be transformed like slash post slash parents id. That allows you to also use it into the context with the parent keys. You can also, with Babel option pre configuration, you can use async and await. Let's make your code more readable. So it's a quick example. You, you get the data from variable from params, you get the data from an API, you get the post, you save it into the post variable, and you render it. You also be able to change the title and the meta, and every page will be SEO friendly. All this configuration. It's not, let's say, okay for all developer and all use case. That's why we get this nux.config.js who allows you to overwrite our configuration trait by, by default and add more functionality. You can add CSS, global CSS like Bulma, Bulma library, your own CSS. You can define a global meta variables, like the title, the content description. You can add vendors, and more and more. Then, just if you are just in development, do an npm run dev. And with the org module replacements, you will have the local school thousand website training. Then, if you want to push it into the production, you have to run just to build a, a build command line. So next, we bend your application into multiple chunk, thanks to Webpack for close splitting for and minify everything for that. So when you run the build commands, your website or application will be production ready, minimized, optimized by default, and then you just have to run your server with npm run stuff. Now, I let my brother continue this talk, and I uh, thank you. Thank you. So now, I wanted to show a demo. So we created the Hacker News clone with Nux.js based on Vue Hacker News 2.0. I don't know if I I should click on the link because maybe it will fail with the computer and the screen. But this is how it looks like. And it's a progressive web application. So we run the Lighthouse uh, tool and we got pretty good stats. Also, this was run on a computer. And uh, so this was made by uh, our new core team member called Puya. And we are also on hackernewsprogressivewebapp.com. And but I would like to talk about modules uh, with Nuxt. It's in the 1.0 and kind of a <coughs> superpower to Nuxt. So to install a module, you, you can just run npm, npm install the module name. You can add the module into your nuxt.config.js file. So there is two way. We like the Babel style to give options. And that's it. <coughs> we already have more than 25 models to work with Nuxt. So for example, you can have Nuxt.js slash bootstrap. You just import it, add it to your nuxt.config.js, and you already have the bootstrap template and all the component, view components already prepared to use with. We also have starter templates, so a basic one, also one to use with Express, because Next.js can be used also as 
uh, Express middleware, or also it's a Connect middleware, so it can be used with Express, Coa, Adonis GS. So this is the starters we have. We have uh, John Link has created the TypeScript starter to work with Nuxt and TypeScript, and we have now a progressive web application starter. So we use Vue CLI, so you can just do Vue e init Nuxt slash PWA and you're ready to start with a progressive web application with Nuxt. I would like to introduce Nuxt community because modules are great, but we want to embrace people to create modules and templates. That's why we created Nuxt community. So everyone can have their module on the official repository so to have more visibility and people from the community can help it's a way to centralize the ecosystem. So we talk a lot about the 1.0 and uh, we push it a little bit because we wanted it to be ready and progressive web application ready. And for the 1.0, the plugins can have access to context. It was the main feature that people were asking to have, to have access, for example, at the request and more options be able to disable server-side rendering for the whole application, a specific layout, or just a, a specific page. So you could create a single page application with Nux, so without the kind of difficulties we, which have the server-side rendering. Or you can just disable it for a layout if you want to create a back office, for example, and uh, you don't need server-side rendering for that. We have the module system and the d dynamic component injection, and we are already ready to work with Vue 2.4, we're just waiting for the release. And um, this way you can just inject uh, your component with a dynamic import. And we also um, split Nuxt in two between the core and the build. This way the webpack dependency, which is kind of heavy, uh, can be in only into the Nuxt dependency, and you can you can add Nuxt into your dev dependencies and add Nuxt start into your dependency. And Nuxt start will only require few modules, and it will be ready to deploy your Nuxt application really fast. We are also working on Nuxt CLI because it's really important for us to to offer a good tool to work with Nuxt, so you can be able to create your a new project with Nuxt. Next new in the template name, list the templates made for, by the community. Also add and remove a module, so it will install it and add it to your nux.config.js. Uh, also list the modules. And same for utils to create a new page and new plugin to embrace view plugins. And the tools, also the tools are pretty important. Next, analyze to analyze your bundle size and help you to optimize more your application. And Next benchmarks will we test your performance of your application because Nux uses file system router. He knows the your routes, so he can benchmark all your routes and give you some hints to optimize. So this is a project we are going to work on it after 1.0. And we have a new core team member. And I have to thank him a lot. He helped us a lot on Next. He created Next helpers, and then it was a great idea. So we he asked we and we asked him if he could join our team. So his whole module ideas is from him, and we are doing a great job with him. So I hope he will keep working with us. Uh, we are an open collective, so we will. I would like to thank you for the bakers and the sponsors. We didn't expect this. It was well, um, well accepted. I mean, uh, people uh, helped us a lot, donation. And some stats about the repo. We have more than 1,000 commits now. We have more than 40 contributors on the Nux.js repository. On the documentation, we have way more. We have 100% of coverage. 
uh, more than 700 issues closed now. We have around 80 issues open now because of the 1.0 alpha. So we are working on it. And more than 30 examples. So we have Feather GS, Socket.io, we have a lot of examples. So you can see how, how to create simple Next.js application. <laughs> and we are actually at 4,000 stars in eight months. So thank you for uh, embracing Next. So the documentation is on nextjs.org. We try our best to have a, a good documentation website like Vue.js does. It's pretty hard to have it as good as Vue.js, but we're working on it. We have five different languages. We have two coming soon. And we have more than three, I mean, <laughs> 300,000 page view per month. And it has been made with Next Generate. I didn't talk about Next Generate, but it's a command line which several render your application, but generated as a static website. So every page of your application will be created as an HTML file. So you can host it on Surge, uh, now any CDN platform. And I would like to thank you, everyone. Thank you, Evanu, for creating Vue.js. Uh, <laughs> thanks to the Vue.js team for uh, helping us with Next.js. They found some bugs, and they, uh, they help us a lot with Next.js. Thanks, Montreal, for hosting the, the first Vue.js official conference. To all contributors of Next.js and future contributors, and all of you for listening for 20 minutes. Thank you.